Good morning, students. May I have your attention, please, for this morning's announcements? I uh, see your shirt is untucked. Detention. Your homework is due every single day. That's why it's home. I will be calling your parents. Hey, what's going on here? No running in school. I'm going to tell your coach about I this. I said that's enough, both of you. Out in the hall. Welcome to episode number 14. Is it? Yes. Hmm. If anybody heard that pop. That was uh, seltzer water. Liquid death. Liquid death. Episode 14 of Out in the Hall. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Rhino, and that is the Willie Mammoth. Mm. We are so excited. It is mid-October. It is awesome. The weather is kind of making an effort. It's doing well. I like it. We'll get this out of the way, because you mentioned these earlier. Right. Got, these are the, like, uh, breeze Those, the, pants. Yeah, they're not the same ones that I'm wearing. They look, no, they they're look more, elastic on the top. Yeah, they look more athletic. Yeah. Well, I usually go with an athletic fit for all my clothes. Um, that material not fit oh yes yeah, they're, they're nice though yeah a little brisk out there today i'm not nice. sure that that is an that is an appropriate uh business um mm -hmm. meeting it's more of a lounger a jogger it is jogger material but it's um it's not pinched at the at the bottom like a like a jogger would be but yes so hey we got the free fly thank you i think they look good yeah thanks they're mm -hmm. very comfortable i can tell well they better be they are I had something I, I couldn't wait to tell you. So this morning I was dropping, you can go through the carpool line, which is its own set of chaos and like, right. You know, your own, get your own brain damage that way. Mm -hmm. Or you can do what I, along with a lot of other parents do. And you uh, drop them off on the street. And there's a handful of parking spots that you pull perpendicular into and you just drop them off. Like you're not getting out or anything. You just let them get out real quick. Right. And then there's also, it's downtown. So there's also this like, I'll call it 60 or 80 foot section. It's like a freight loading zone. Right. A lot of folks use that in the morning. Is it a freight loading zone for the school? I guess. And for like the commercial area Got around it. there. Right. Got so it. like there's a bank across the street. Oh, this is like a parallel parking spot that is just a freight loading area. It's actually about the size of four parallel parking spots, but it's designed so those big trucks can pull in sideways. Right. Parallel, not perpendicular like the other streets. Yep. Uh, other spots. But anyway. Geometry. This morning, it's all backed up. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like, normally, people know the drill. You pull in, right. your kit, and it's backed up like two lights. Hmm. I get up there, and there is a City of Orlando truck, number 10324. Hmm. A guy is parked in that freight zone. Right. Not doing any official business because it's not 8 o'clock yet, but is eating a breakfast sandwich, just hogging the space. He could sit, park anywhere. Uh, I knocked okay. on the window. It made me so bad. What'd you say? I was like, why do you have to park here? You could park anywhere. He held his sandwich up, like <laughs> cheers, and waved at me and went right back to his iPad. <laughs> and I watched it. He was watching Sports Center on his iPad. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> this guy's awful. I like this guy. <laughs> when I say one, zero, three, two, four. Cheers. And I couldn't find where to like make a complaint in the city. So I'm just going to put the guy on blast now. Are you city of Orlando? Yes. Okay. I didn't know if the neighbor of. Say that yes. area, you know, they have different areas. Yeah, for no, example. I'm a city okay. of Orlando resident, tax okay. paying resident, by the way. That's good. <laughs> I think if you lived here, you're paying taxes uh, here. The you're guy knew what he was you doing. Have county sales tax. You, so even if you rented, you were paying taxes. Right. Well, I am. I know. <laughs> but he was just doing it to. What's, what sort of, what would you, what would you, if you had to give him a name, what, what would that name be? I do not like this game. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do not like give, this game. Give, this game got me in some trouble a few weeks ago. Give him a name. See, I'm afraid if I say a name, then you're going to make an assumption about race. <laughs> just, that's what you you wanted me to step all in that. Just say say something that you think is name. His there's name was, there's plenty of black guys that are named Kevin. Well, he wasn't black. Okay, maybe he was uh, a white guy. He was a white guy. Okay, so it was Alan. <laughs> so I, I have a friend named Alan too. <laughs> I love it. Why do you make me do this? Was he like a nerd? That, that's no, like, he's like a big, like... That's not Alan. Who was it then? He's like a big, like, sort of husky guy? Or would you say, like, big, like, he's... He's like a big city... Ate too many breakfast sandwiches. He was like a big city worker, you know? Okay. Chuck? Good Chuck. Okay. It was a good... There you go. Okay. That's a good <laughs> Chuck. Come on. See, I could do this too. Okay. Asking, you know. All right. I, <laughs> I, I'm not going to ask you to do something I'm not going to do. No, I, <laughs> I, I, uh, man, I hate that. I don't okay. like that. Right. Well, you need to... It makes me sweat. Why? I have so many great friends who have different names. Why do you have so many great friends? Just have a couple great friends. Because I the love rest people. Of them are, I know, but that's a lot. You don't have that many great friends. I really do. No. No. In fact, in fact all of you are. 
All right. I'm happy for you then. I'm glad you do. I want to pass a note to you. Okay, I'm ready. It's really short. It's great. It's cute. Where did it go? Sorry, I was ready. See, I have mine open up in front of me here. My notes. Johnny Prep over there. That I can't read. This is from Olivia. Okay. And she says, hi, Mr. Matt and the other guy. (laughs) My mom and dad love your show. Oh. And I think it's very funny. Please tell, and then he calls your current wife by her name. Hi for me. Neighbor Olivia. (laughs) I know exactly who it is. Yeah, Yeah. 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 She's great. She's like all of a sudden become like a young lady. I hadn't seen them in a minute. Since oh, they that's moved. nice. Very nice. And all of a sudden I like show up at a, a charity event with her parents and she's like working the charity event. She, she's like volunteering at the charity yeah, event. She's not six years old anymore. No, she, all of a sudden she's like, I don't know how old, I don't know. I can't tell maybe like 12 or 13 yeah. or something like that. But like she all of a sudden looks like a young woman. And I was like, oh my gosh, she got tall and you know, like you're growing up. Yeah. Oh yeah. That happens quick with your, like at this age. With our I'm, kids. I'm seeing it. You haven't seen like one of your great friends, you know, that yeah. all your great friends that you have. And it's tough with all if, my great if friends. If you haven't seen one of their kids in a minute. Yeah. And all of a sudden you see them again the next time you're like, oh. Yeah. Bro, you're big, big. Happened to me the other day. <laughs> yeah. oh. uh, Olivia, it's Rhino. You can call me the other guy, but it's. She's great. What a nice thing. All right. We're going to jump into janitor's closet. I like it. Yep. Okay. This story comes to us from Tom in Rochester, Minnesota. Okay. It says, I have a friend with a decent college story. All right. Telling stories on other people. I'm here for it. Just like, I have a friend. <laughs> yeah. Wink. <laughs> okay. My uh, roommate. Okay. All right, Minneapolis. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It says, during our freshman year, my friend and I lived in a dorm, basically UF's version of an on, oh, he went to Florida, basically US ver- UF's version of an on-campus high-rise apartment. After many nights of partying, my friend would enter various units in the building and steal food out of the refrigerator to satisfy his late night munchies. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I did that in a fraternity house. Yeah, but that's different. The, than go, just... the breaking and entering? Yes. Yeah, I lived in the fraternity house. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody puts something in a community fridge in the fraternity house, I mean, it is fair game. Honestly, I mean, you're, you're an idiot if it, you don't think it is. And if you put your name on it, it's definitely going to get taken. 100%. Right. Don't yeah. eat. All right. Okay, got it. Uh, so he says he would enter... Uh, various units in the building and steal food out of the refrigerator to satisfy his late night munchies. Somehow he eventually got caught, was charged and made it to the school newspaper. Oh God. Thanks to this article, he will forever be known as the chicken wing bandit. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Tom in Rochester, Minnesota. <laughs> you got to have some stones. Well, now today you will get shot. Well, but, it was but, on campus. I got it still. Well, maybe. I guess you can't have guns on campus, can you? <laughs> no. What? I don't know. Absolutely not. But, you, I mean, you probably get kicked out of school for that. <laughs> it depends on how many chicken wings he stole, in my opinion. Like, how long did he do this for? If, this is like, if people had been reporting missing chicken wings for, <laughs> for months, that's a different story than the if chicken... it's like it was like his third night, you know? I mean, chicken wing bandit. Could you imagine the charge? It's like... Uh, thievery of wings and then the parenthesis says uh, over 24 like it says the amount of wings i mean it'd be impossible to get into felony territory with chicken wings right i'm not sure what the the it's probably like five thousand dollars what's larceny i don't know the day i just tell you oh i got bad news for you it's three hundred dollars for a felony larceny is larceny a felony uh yes no oh yes three hundred dollars so if you steal something worth $300, it's... Okay, hold on. It's larceny, grand theft is charged a first-degree felony if the amount exceeds 100000 There. Depending on how many wings. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm no judge and jury. I'm just reporting the facts. Got it. So larceny is just theft. It becomes grand larceny when the item is valued at 300 or higher. It becomes a first-degree felony if the amount stolen is, exceeds $100,000. What about a second or third degree felony? Is there such a thing as those? That sounds like there probably is, just given the nature that they gave a degree. You know what I'm happy about? What? That we're not familiar with the criminal justice system. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm in I, unfamiliar territory. I here. like that about us. That, that says, I mean, we're doing something right. Well, <clears throat> If you're I, super familiar with the what felonies, right. larceny, grand larceny, B&E, you know, like on all the charges they bring. Right. That's probably not great. Yeah, you like you watch those movies and they're like, I wouldn't do that. You can get three to five. Like, 
<laughs> you and I just look at it and say, not doing that. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 but like, I wouldn't do that. That's 10 to 12. <laughs> First offense, brother. Yeah, trust yeah. Me. I know. <laughs> I'll take you to Rayford for that one. All right. Rayford. God, that was dark. Yeah. Well, dark place. That's where they, that's that's where where they, they take you. That's where they electrocute people here yeah. in the state. There's yeah, plenty they, of other state penitentiaries that we old, have that aren't. Yes. Rayford is just where they do it. Old Sparky. It used to be there. We don't do that anymore. We don't? No. We do the shot. We do the shot. We don't do a chair. No. You don't suppose that you, you walk in the room and they're like, have a seat. And you're like, I thought you guys didn't do the chair. Like, no, no, no. We just didn't get a new chair. We just don't turn that one on. <laughs> I wonder if they give you like back in the day, would give you like a Valium or something like that before you got in the electric I chair? I don't think so. Oh gosh. I just think, it, can you imagine you walk in there and it's old Sparky sitting there? They're like, Hey, don't worry. It's unplugged, but we are going to give you the shot in this safe chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny, man. Innocent people get executed. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That is also true. Yeah. It can both be funny and true that innocent people get not anymore they don't because we don't have it anymore <laughs> i just think that like the warden is like i'm not getting a new chair you guys can i read that. somewhere that the like the last <laughs> use of the, of the guillotine was like way later than you thought right like in the 50s or 60s or something or 70s it was in the 70s Find it's that. recent no it's 70s or 80s i just started typing last use of yeah and it says populates guillotine because it, it has a mic on it that you've allowed access <laughs> to Google. You can go and take that access away, though. Well, I kind of like it. It saved me from... Okay. Just so you know, though, everybody knows that, yes, Google's listening, but you can remove that permission. I think this is going to shock you. What? Not a single U.S. state has officially used guillotines I'm not for talking, executions. I'm not talking about the guillotine. I'm talking about the world. Like in France. Well, France is actually what came up first. Right. Use the guillotine in France. Oh, uh, yeah. The 10th of September, 1977. Right. <laughs> They still executed people by guillotine in France up until 77. And it was allowed to be used until 1981. They just didn't have anybody to use it on. That is holding on to a relic, and that's nasty. Is it? Yeah, well, France came up with that, didn't they? Well, it's a very French-sounding word, but I don't think the Americans are like, we should build a guillotine. And the French is like, <laughs> the guillotine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was like, hey, we're going we're gonna to cut that guy's head off. Let's use this guillotine. <laughs> And they're like, we like this. We will use this. What we will call it the guillotine. <laughs> God, that's so bad. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. All right. I actually think it'd be way scarier to like walk up and see that thing. You know, they're giving it a few test runs while you're getting up on that platform. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like chopping like a watermelon in yeah, half or something. That's what like. I was thinking. <laughs> you're like, are, they gonna sh are you going to sharpen it and the, anymore? Uh, what do they call that? The Undertaker? The, yeah. The, 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 the swordsman or whatever? Yeah. He's sitting there eating a piece of watermelon. He's <laughs> dripping down his beard. He doesn't beard. even have a beard. He has one of those uh, hoods on. Yeah, and he's just all, it's all on the side and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's just <laughs> spitting it. seeds. What if they, like, did the guillotine and the test run just to mess with the person? And, like, they dropped the guillotine and it only went, like, that far into the watermelon. So it didn't... <laughs> <laughs> it didn't kill the watermelon <laughs> they're like don't worry <laughs> we're, we're gonna sharpen oh, it for you <laughs> gosh yeah you better get a new blade after this one <laughs> that watermelon no your head <laughs> damn it <laughs> sorry oh, no that's no, true though it's true that would that, that'd be a good way to mess with them oh my god there's a ride somewhere a Vegas. guillotine ride? No, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> Vegas comes to mind, but I, it's somewhere. And there's this famous, these, this guy's like internet famous now because I'll actually post this on at Out in the Hall Pod, uh, our Instagram. I'll post this video. There's this guy and he films himself and it's one of these like drop rides. So you and I would get in the ride. Right. The right got it. I got it. Yep. Okay. Got it. And he's like, all right, you guys ready? And they're like, yeah, we're ready. And he goes, all right, let me check one thing. And he goes and checks like something right. and he drops a bolt out of his hand and it hits the metal. He goes, oh crap. And then they drop and it scares the crap out of people. It is so funny. That is so mean. Oh, it is so funny. <clears throat> nope. Don't worry. That's, we don't need that. Yeah. Oh, ha oh hold on. Shh, shh. You're gone. Oh, it's so funny. Yep. I'll post it on Instagram. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so good. That reminded me of your uh, guillotine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just scare him. Don't worry, though. It's We're fine. Gonna, it's, we didn't need that. You'll be all right. You're spitting some watermelon seeds. <laughs> <laughs> Way to bring It'll it back together. Right. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, if you have a janitor's closet, a story for the janitor's closet, something that was embarrassing or funny that happened to you. I like the chicken wing college, bandit. That's, that's nice. I think that's great. The guy goes on in the story to say that like that was his name forever. Really? Oh, I'd definitely call you something. Oh, yeah. Like a well, bandit. I just call you bandit. <laughs> Y'all want to get some wings? I know Especially you do. Especially be arrested and charged for it. Otherwise, uh, it's funny if you don't get caught. That's funny. Right. But it probably doesn't stick as hard as if you got arrested. How about if you're in the school newspaper? Is literally headline: Chicken Wing Bandit that's Caught. Right. It just sticks. Now oh you're done. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. That's great. We're the Wet Bandits. Uh, who knew something that funny could come out of UF? Oh, huh, well, uh, we're gonna hear about that one. Uh, Believe me, we're gonna hear about that comment. Oh God. What have you been up to lately? I've been thinking. You were thinking recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've I've been, been doing some thinking. I've been thinking. And I, I know, like, you know, my show and shares, you know, I, they don't have to have a definition. It can just kind of be whatever you want it to be, right? And this, is a, this is a chance for me to be vulnerable all with right. my show and share. I was vulnerable recently. You were. Yeah. About, about all the crying. Yeah. Yes, you did. A gr I love that. I'm going to expose an insecurity of mine. Here we go. This will be about. And these are words that I constantly misspell. I cannot learn how to spell them. Can I ask you a question before yes. you get into it? I, I, I know you don't have an iPhone. Right. Do you have the ability to talk to text in your yes. phone? Yes. <laughs> because when I can't, there's about eight words I can't spell. Whoa. And I'm just like, receive. <laughs> R-E-R-E. -E. And I'm like, Doo -doo. receive. And like, I'll have it type. That's what I do. Do you do that? No. I, sometimes I just let it spell wrong. And then correct it? Yeah. And then okay. just hit the R correct at the bottom. Okay. I love uh, it. Let's hear these words. Okay. Pay attention. This is going to be good. <clears throat> Let's do this. You say it. I'm going to try to spell it. I, there's a lot of them. I, okay. All right. Well, well, we could do some of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, you, you pick this is, one. You this think is I the should... one that I should be most ashamed of because right, I'm going to try to spell this. It's one. in my industry. This word is used constantly in my industry. Okay. I have, you have to spell it on emails all the time. Okay. Okay. Maintenance. It literally popped up like you, you messed mean it up. Maintenance. Yeah. Maintenance. Maintenance. It's not maintenance. I don't know how to spell it still. <laughs> Cause uh, you know, what's funny like... about all these words that I wrote down too. They're all misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> That is incredible. Yeah, of course they are, because I don't know how to spell them. That's so funny, because <laughs> well, you use analog notes. You yeah. Know? That is so funny. Uh, that's because it's like, hey, we need a maintenance man out here. Sure, or it's just it's a line item expense in a lot of my spreadsheets. But no one's ever like, hey, we need a maintenance man out here. I don't know how we people a, say it. We I need a maintenance man. I'm almost scared to say it. I'm scared that I don't know how to say it. Maintenance. That just sounds like I'm blending the whole word together and just kind of a <laughs> Yeah, you just got <laughs> a little schmear. Ugh. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, necessary. No chance. <laughs> Do you ever rewrite the sentence? What? Oh, like if I, I could say the sentence was, um, I'm not sure if that is going to be necessary. Oh, you, call to avoid later. the word. Yeah, call me later. Huh. We'll discuss. All right. After mm -hmm. I misspell it six times so bad that the autocorrect doesn't catch it. We don't need to do that. I'll just be like, I'm not sure if this is needed. You know, so I move it to some word. Some synonym. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That you can spell. Yes. All the time. Receive. I think I can do that. R-E-I-E-V-E. -E -E. I can do that one. I before E except after C. That's correct. But it's after C. So I just spelled it wrong. Right. What an idiot. <laughs> As I lecture you about the, come on, everybody knows yeah, the rule. I, calendar. I can do that. Uh, definitely. I always write defiantly. <laughs> I've told some people that I will defiantly get back to them by the end of the day. How about this one? <laughs> defiantly. Thank will, you for your email. I will defiantly get back <laughs> with you by the end of the day. You've misspelled definitely so bad that it assumes that you're saying defiantly. I do it every time. That's fantastic. Entrepreneur. <laughs> oh, Not a chance. No chance. Privilege. No. Nope. I always forget that D before the G. Right. Yeah. D before D, before G when it ends with E. I don't know. I just made that up. So, License. Yeah. I, I'm always like, there's no way there's an S in this word. <laughs> there is. I get too many S's and not enough C's. Oh, I always go hard on the C's on yeah. license. Yeah. There's one of each. That's right. Gauge. I always mix up the A and the U. Gouge. Yeah. I guess I do bright gouge. <laughs> hey, I want to <laughs> gouge your opinion. <laughs> I want to gouge your thoughts. Yeah, on all this. right. Last one. Last one. <laughs> Separate. Separate. I can do that. S E P E R A T E. S A P A R A T E. Got it wrong. Yep. See, I did. Separate. Do yeah. Okay. That's that's mine. That's great. Yeah. Some vulnerability there. Uh, <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> I was in Philadelphia last week. This is my what have I been up to? Lately. Right. And uh, there are two, f like in quotes, famous cheesesteak places in. Don't they like a, look look at each other? Aren't they like right across the street from each other? 
Yeah, do you know this? Geno's and something else. Pats. Uh, Pats. Okay. okay. My business partner. Yeah. From Philly. Okay. So if you're from Philly, you would be like, don't go there. It's like kind of like being like, hey, you got to check out the Sabaro in Times. I mean, it's not the Sabaro in Times Square because it is authentic and it is real. Is it good? <laughs> okay. Right. Let me tell you. I'm Ben, clearly. So it's very good. But I was in town. <clears throat> I had some time to kill. I'm like, all right, we're here. Again, it's not Sabaro in Times Square. It's not. You know, but it's a little, got a little touristy she, aspect. It does. It. It's yeah. not the Cheesecake Factory, but it's got a little tourist like, and they and their whole shtick is got to come to one the Gino or Pats or whatever. Right. So I was there, <clears throat> very nice, cool day. So I walk over, and I honestly didn't know they were across the street from each other. Do they I, look at you funny if you go to the other one? Are there like people that just are okay. their job is outside designed to stare you down? No. Or to okay. shame you? No. A couple things I'll tell you about both. You don't eat inside. Mm. You eat at like a picnic table. Is it covered? It is covered. Okay. <laughs> That would be important up there. Yes. So they are literally across the street from one another. So I stood <laughs> and thought, well, I just don't know which one to go to. You don't, don't genuinely don't know. I really don't know. So what I did was I, I just people watched for about five minutes. Oh. Who was going to this one? Who was going to that one? Who was going to this one? And then you're trying to identify with that person. You're like, well, that guy kind of looks like me. Well, uh, so I'll go to that one. <laughs> to some extent, although. I don't have like a Flyers jersey on or an Eagles jersey on like most of the people that are going. So what I did was I watched four mailmen come as a crew. I know they work the neighborhood. They went to Pat's. I went to Pat's. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. Those guys know like which one, which is the spot. For sure. That's absolutely smart. And I like that you picked a group of people that you didn't necessarily think looked like you it wasn't about where like where you would go if you're wearing loafers it was about oh, where I, would I you know, go but like what's if, better if a certain crowd uh type of crowd was going into one place that maybe didn't fit your socioeconomic demographic or your racial demographic i'm proud of you that's all i'm saying you looked at i don't think you need to be proud of me it's not like i judge people like that. i know but what i'm saying is i of course you don't but i like that your natural position there just speaks to your heart just i just you know i did for once in my life yeah i paused you pa- <laughs> Literally, good, good. <laughs> for once in my life, I paused and I thought, all right. And you observed. Yeah, I looked. It wasn't about me. You weren't staring at your phone. No. You were looking at the world around you yep. and what it was offering you and you were taking it. I was like, give me a sign. And <laughs> it's the mailman for the sign. Four of them. Four of them. Husky, Husky Chucks. No, these guys are moving, moving, slinging a lot oh, of letters oh, up yeah. there. It's um, you're walking a lot. They're walking mail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not down here. Our guy walks. That's cool. We got the, uh. With the truck? No, they don't allow the mail service oh, inside my neighborhood. <laughs> we have a private mail service delivery. So you, it's a couple guys that ride around on golf carts, like in nice golf carts. Please pigeonhole yourself some more. <laughs> and deliver mail. There's no mailboxes either. Everybody's got slots. We have slot. Our guy dumps it in the slot. And he walks just weird. Up, I grew up with a mailbox, ball. so it's just weird not to have a mailbox. Yeah, we have a slot. Yeah. Well, you have a cool historic old home, so that That's makes cool. that makes sense. That That's cool. That you would have a slot. Yeah, what have you been up to lately? What have I been up to lately? Um, wondering why I don't have a mailbox. Really? Yeah. I've been thinking about it a lot. Do you like, miss it? I do. It's now, kind of a pain to walk out and get it. I it's got it. Nice but it, to get but, it. But you, you know what you see is the home address numbers on the side of the mailbox. You don't have to look up at the house. That, yeah, heaven forbid you just take your eyes. Don't take them off the road. It's important to be looking at the road. You guys don't have it on the side of your driveway? A lot of people have plaques they put in their front yard or whatever, then they, you know, light them up. But like, still, you still got to look over there. And, you know, as you know, my eyesight's not as good as it used to be. Yeah. And so I prefer an address on a mailbox. It's easy to identify. Because if you're like on like using Waze or Google Maps or something, and you pull up, it's like, you have reached your destination, but you might be one house off or maybe, you know what I mean? Maybe it's like lagging a little bit. They've done a great job getting you there that 99th percent. They might not get to it. It's that last mile. And then, but the problem with having mailboxes is occasionally, unless you have really strict architectural controls, you get the person that puts out like the manatee concrete mailbox. Yep. And you're like, come on, dude. Yeah. Just get like a nice Some wood guy's got mailbox. a birdhouse out there. <laughs> yeah. Windmill. 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 A windmill. Yeah. A yeah. windmill. Yeah. I'm just saying. Come on, man. Yeah. So it's a fine line. <laughs> just like everything in life, it's not black or white. It's, it's gray. All right, show and share for me. Have you ever heard of the Isle of Man? It doesn't it have like a like a concert uh, there? There's like a, a festival or a big place to watch m- 
Like music? Alive? <clears throat> no. Okay, damn. Well, I shouldn't say no like that. It doesn't on, relate to what you're talking about. No. They have what's called the Race of the Isle of Man TT. Okay. Which stands for like touring something. I should probably know that right now. Tourist Trophy. The Isle of Man Tourist Trophy. Okay. Okay. It's a motorcycle race that's been going on for like 100 years. It's nuts. Is it on the road? It's on public roads, but they close them. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> well, yeah. So the track is 37.75 miles long. Okay. They didn't and give you kilometers? Is this in Scotland? It is in the, like the British Isles. So they gave you miles and didn't well, give you kilometers? Well, they did because I, well, my Wikipedia is based in the United States. Got it. And thanks to geolocation, they know I'd want to know the miles. Good. And they gave me miles per hour, which is going to come up in a second. Wow. Okay. 37 miles. Yep. 38 miles. What do you think the fastest lap time is? This not, is this not a pop quiz. Okay. Just, it kind of sounds like a pop quiz. It's not. It's just a little. Uh, that's not fair. I asked you to describe the guy's name. Yeah. How fast do I think the motorcycles do? Are these like Ducatis? Oh, or yeah. Like, okay. Do this fast. 16 minutes is the fastest lap. So you're going 200 miles an hour? The average speed is over 150 miles an hour. Yeah. They also average <clears throat> 2.5 deaths a year in the race. What? Yes. Who are these people? Is it like a circuit or is this yeah, just like. No, 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 no. This isn't like you and I being like, let's go run with the bulls. And next we're going right. to ride, ride so these, these motorcycles. these are professional riders. The best riders of all of, in the world. Why is this particular track so deadly? Well, I think it's a time trial. So you're not racing anyone. So it's like, I don't know how fast the other guys are going. So I yep. really got to step on it. But I watched a bunch of YouTube videos and I'd recommend anyone do that as well. These guys are going so fast. There's like a little elevation change. Like when they come up over a hill, they will catch air, and sometimes they land and, and get the speed wobbles. Wobble, yeah. It's nuts. This is televised. I guess it would be. Te like yeah, I'm like, sure. Like, like on like one of those European race channels. Or maybe like a motor trend. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. So one guy won the thing like 10 times race awards. Hold on. This is nuts. This guy won it like, yeah, 10 times in a matter of Is he of European? Yeah, they're all European guys. Got it. Uh, they're not all. They're not all European guys. You probably got some, a uh, few like, Japanese or uh, I don't know, see Asian racers in there. Like I don't know, just because when I say the word Ducati. Okay, here's some names: uh, Glenn Irwin, Peter Hickman. Yeah. I was trying to just read like all these names and be like Suzuki Hamatachi. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard not to like. We're definitely leaving that in because uh, it's not racist at all. No, you just, just like you just get excited when you see an Asian name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, do. you do. You want to do like an Asian game show host kind of. Yeah, yeah, because they do it. For sure they do it. Oh, that's funny. The Isle of Man TT is kind of how it's said. What, what is it? What is t time trials? No, I just had it. It was tourist trophy. Got it. But but when you hear like the like a British person say it, they're like, this is the most crazy thing. The Isle of Man TT. <laughs> and I was like, the man TT? What is, what is he? He pee pee, sir? Yes, <laughs> I didn't know. I'm is like, this gotta... a, is this a peeing competition? Yeah. What is this? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna it, check it out. It is like I kind of want to go. It probably doesn't help that like seems like everything in the British Isles is wet all the time. Mm. Probably doesn't help. So wet. It'd probably be different if they were racing in like the desert. So listen to this. In 2018, yeah, there was a wreck, a fatal wreck. Okay. Whoever was in charge sent the police and paramedics on the track, but didn't alert all the drivers. And a motorcycle rider hit the police car that was going to help the other guy. Oh, uh, did he die too? No, but he spent like five days in the hospital. <clears throat> oh, man. It's one of these things you look at and you're like, this I kind of like that, though, like little obstacles. Right. Like a few, that guy should have swerved if he was really good. Dude, he's going 200 miles an hour. Yeah. I'll put a video of this up too on, on our Instagram. All right, it, give it's me, crazy. Give me your two truths and a lie. All right. I've seen the Beach Boys in concert. Okay. I've been skydiving. Okay. I've been in the back of a police car. I think your lie is that you have been in the back of a police car. I've been in the back of a police car. Dang. When? <laughs> Labor Day weekend. Labor. No. no. Uh, so, though, I was hoping that you would guess that so I could tell this story. In college, we had a float in the homecoming parade. Sure. And I don't know if you remember this story. There's a photo of this somewhere out there. I could probably post that, too. Hmm. Of you in the police car? No. So what happened was the parade route, sure. okay, went in front of our fraternity house. And naturally, 
our fraternity had a float in the parade. We could just say our house. Okay. We went in front of our house yeah. and we had a float in the parade. Sure. Well, a bunch of us, you know, knuckleheads decided we should do another float. Mm. So we had another float and it was a buddy of ours with a John Deere tractor and a flatbed trailer. And he, we had strapped a, a mounted stuffed turkey. Does his name begin with J? Yes, it does. Okay. Got yeah. it. Yep. J-B-M. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 And he was wearing a Speedo and a Budweiser flag tied around his neck. 100%. Was there and there was this. about six of us. Or well, no, I bet there was 15 of us on this flatbed trailer with two picnic tables. And we had cooler beer. And every other float was throwing out candy. And we were throwing out beer. So the way we got into the parade was when the route went in front of our house, our float stopped. The bogus float yes. pulled out in front. So like made room. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You, I, I, no, no. You remember? I was there. Okay. Yeah. We pull out. <laughs> Well, as we go up the hill towards campus, we're now illegally in the parade and we're throwing beer out of cooler to people. On the, I mean, there's, some, I don't know, thousands of people on the side of the yeah. road. I mean, it's a big deal. A lot of families. A lot of, oh yeah. Well, a lot of students where we were, frankly, until okay. Okay. we got to the top of the hill, which is kind of the main entrance of campus, which if you're not familiar with that campus, it's probably, let's call it 300 yards from where we pulled in. Well, as we're riding up this hill, these cops on motorcycles come over and they're like, pull over. And we're like, where? You can't just pull over on the middle of a parade. Right. So the parade route, we went up the hill and to the right. Well, the, that's what the parade route did. Right. They made us go to the left. Right. Well, if you've ever seen a parade before at, at Westcott. Yeah. If you've ever seen a parade before, you follow the float in front of you. Yeah. So they pull us over to the left where the route goes to the right. Yes. And everybody behind us is now going left. <laughs> off the parade route. Off the parade route. And I'll never forget, we get to the top of the hill, and we know we're in trouble at this point. Oh, yeah. And you hear, like, it's like the, uh, the drum major for the band or the, you know, the guy that does the announcing? Yes. And he's like, and next up, we have the students of engineering with an engineering feat from the Wright brothers. <laughs> and next we have... You know, the architecture school. What'd they, what'd they say about y'all? And next we have, and you hear this like, what the heck is going on? Like, what that? What in the world is going on? <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and then the guy's like, all right, everybody stop. Back up. And they're trying to back up. It was a disaster. Right. Yes. So we got pulled into a parking lot. Um, right across from uh, Katie there. Yes. And it was, uh, we don't know what we're going to do with you guys for a minute, but you are going to wait back here. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> and we're like, look. And actually, an old friend of our house was very high up in the police department, and he came right over. Yeah. Remember him? Yes. JT. Yeah. I won't say his name. JT. Uh, sure. Although, I think he goes by JT. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Don't worry. He didn't do he anything didn't illegal. Anything wrong. Yeah. He just was like, he opened the door, and he's like, you guys are idiots. We're taking the trailer and the tractor. Get out of here. We just got right back to yeah. campus, and we went back the next day, and they had not removed the tractor or the trailer, and- um, You took it back? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like sitting back there, if I'm honest. Yeah, you didn't. Uh, no, it's not comfortable. Not much leg room back there. Not great leg room at all. <laughs> at all. It's made to be extremely uncomfortable. It is. The whole, it, they it's four intentional. Of us back there. Because <laughs> there's like three or four cars, and they have the four of us, like in each. They're like, all right, slide over, slide over. <laughs> Everybody's got cowboy hats on. <laughs> yeah, they're not giving you nice bucket seats. No, no, yeah. no. It's like a bench that's kind of pitched forward. And yeah. It's terrible. No, well, I remember. You remember that? Yeah. All right, yeah. you ready for mine? Yeah, two truths and a lie. <clears throat> two truths and a lie. I prefer the handicap option when it comes to porta potties. I don't mind a twisted seatbelt. The pediatricians did not cut my frenulum properly. I know that's true. The last thing's true because I have the same thing. That's why I get a little <laughs> tongue tied sometimes. Got the, short, got the short tongue. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't stick out my tongue at all. No, like. <laughs> All right, so you nailed it. That's one of the okay. truths. The lie would be you don't mind a twisted seatbelt. That's right. It bothers me. It bothers everyone. I mean, that's like. We get to an Uber and the, and the seatbelt's all twisted and you're trying to put it on right, but you don't want to like undo it five times. Just, it just happened to me. I will tell you this about Uber. Remember when Uber first came out? It was like, yeah, we'll take you from here to, you know, Atlanta for $7. Yeah. It's gotten really expensive. It's very expensive. And. 
the cars, if you don't do black, are like they are junk. Junk. Yeah. Rattle buckets. Yeah. But and I've started to identify this. Like I'm an Uber a couple nights a week, probably. Yeah. If I have to go to like a work dinner or something. That's fair. Yeah. Also, you don't have to park. It's nice. One hundred percent. So I'm not taking these long, luxurious rides, but now I can the guy pulls up or the girl, and I'm like, this you air freshener is gonna be out of control. Do you cancel? <laughs> You know what I mean? You get in, it's like, oh my, it smells like Bath and Body Works in here. Really bad. I'm like, dude, you got to roll the window down. Now, you know what I also do? You can set a preference on your Uber. Sure. Cold and quiet. Oh, I like it. Of course. Yeah. And I usually call like you or somebody. Yeah, you chatting it up. Yeah. That's fine. Right. I'm like, I you tell you. You have to be quiet. He has. <laughs> <Right>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. I prefer cold uh, and quiet. Why? Well, so I don't have to be quiet. Yeah, yeah. right. And I'm back there just yucking it up. Yeah. Like I get in the car and he's like, are you Ryan? I'm like, yes. Yeah. Nothing. No more questions though. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll call you and I'm like, hey, the other day, <laughs> I peed on the toilet seat. This, you know, we're really yucking it up. Poor Uber guy. This guy's like, this yeah. guy. What a guy. <laughs> I do prefer the handicap option on the porta potties. I do too. Yeah. And in a regular bathroom every time. Sometimes in a regular bathroom, the handicap uh, toilet seat is a little high. I don't know why. You don't know why. So you don't have to bend down so far if you have like a handicap. That's really true. Okay. Makes sense. So I don't necessarily love that. You know, I'm a squatty putty guy. I got the squatty potty. Oh, yeah. yeah. I did know that. Yeah. So you I, like those knees way up. I there. like the knees way up, natural position. Yep. Yeah. Just make it make it nice Prefer and easy. For a hole if your wife would let you have it. Just go there and <laughs> dig you a hole in the backyard. <laughs> Let's see. We've got a pop quiz up. Yeah, we do. All right, I'll go. Okay. What percentage of people in the world cannot swim? Oh, gosh. I know you just want an answer, but I have a mask question. Sure. I would imagine that, like, babies are taken out of that. These are people that can answer the question. Oh, I got it. Okay. These are self-identified. Okay. Cannot swim. Cannot swim. 30% of people? 56% of people in the world cannot say that they can't swim. So if those people are saying they can't swim, you know, there's probably a percentage of the people that say that they can swim. But they can't. But really, they can't. Or they can just enough to stay above water. What's U.S.? Much, much better. I mean, most of our large coastal cities are on, I mean, our cities are on the coast. Right. And we have a good, like, uh, youth Generally, drowning yeah, prevention it, yeah, program. Yeah, there's, there's, there's public funds used. The YMCA is yeah, big on that. That's right. Yeah. 20% of the people in the U.S. can't swim. That still seems high. It doesn't seem that high, actually. I mean, think, well, to me, it seems think about high. the Midwest. They got tons of lakes. Yeah, out there. but it's not really that's not, water sports and like being in the lakes aren't necessarily a priority. And it's cold a lot in the Midwest. Yeah, I get it. So I'm just saying that's uh, that's still not bad. Fifty six percent of the people in the world cannot swim. Now, the disparities in developing countries between men and women who say, I mean, women in developing countries cannot swim. They are not taught how to swim. It's not a recreation thing. It is not recreation. Yeah. Right? And they just, for, you know, maybe like driver's licenses. I love world. to swim. I love to swim. I love to swim. But I, I also think that our access growing up to things to swim in. We grew up in Florida. There's safely, pools everywhere. Yeah, pools, lakes. O- ocean, ocean lakes. Yeah. It's, it's just, we're, it's pretty unique. To the rest of the world, probably. Yeah, and to a little bit of the U.S. too. Yeah, I guess, you, you know, you're right. Like, there's some people that are like, man, I'd love to see the ocean someday. Yeah, yeah. That's I'd prefer right. to never see it again. It's so sandy, <laughs> sticky. I, I love how sticky and sandy it is. I hate it. I like a lake or a pool or an ocean. My anyway. children come home from the beach, which is only like five minutes from our house. Right. Okay, come home from the beach, which we have a nice little place they can go to the beach. There's showers up there and everything. They could shower off before they get home. They will come home and they decide to, for whatever reason change for out of their bathing suit into their regular clothes or whatever uh and without showering yeah well this is probably because we'll go down to the beach and then we'll come up and then we'll spend a little bit in the pool yeah so you know like you would yeah, think you that like the kids it. are kids are clean and er right there is my children get so much sand in their bathing suits that ends up on my bathroom floor because no, they couldn't stand it because they come in my bedroom to change i, I really couldn't <laughs> i'd be like guys we're not going to the beach anymore. and we have a really shelly beach so there's a lot of shells. So I'll walk in, I'll be like, ow. And this is what's in their pockets. No, pockets or just the, the mesh netting. lining yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, dude, how do you have that in your butt? <laughs> you like, don't care. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you feel that? I didn't feel that, dude. This is like gl- shards of glass. You didn't feel that? Yeah. This is a conch shell in there. You didn't I mean, feel could it? you imagine that just rubbing up in your crotch? Yeah. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> Actually, I can't imagine, which is why I don't go to the beach. But no, I don't like it. The sand's different. No, the sand's the same. Yeah. All right. So when a flight attendant says cross check, you know what I'm talking about? I do know when they say it. Do you know what that means? No. Uh, hold on. Can I t- do you want me to guess? It's a pop quiz. What does cross check mean? Is how I should have said it. What does cross check mean? You know, when the captain's like, oh, flight attendant's a uh, cross check for a landing. Yep. No, it's actually departure. Yeah, departure where they do... for par- departure and cross check. Yeah, they do it when you land too. They're like, uh, all flight attendants cross check. And... I think they only cross check at departure. I'm sure we'll get fact checked on this, but either way, it means okay. the same thing. All right, cross check. Does it mean to make sure the doors are locked? It sure does. Both doors are locked and charged. Charged? You know they're on charges. What do you mean? They explode open. If there was an accident, if there was a need for it, you wouldn't open them manually. There's a... But when I look at the exit row, uh, it shows you picking up the, uh, the door and moving it inside. That's not the case for the big doors. For the big doors, yeah, they they blow off. They'd they eject, it. and there'd be like a raft situation that comes out. If you either slide down or float in, something like that, right? But they're definitely checking: are they shot, locked, and the, and are they charged? Okay, I I got it. Yeah, you got it. I did. Good I, job. I didn't know that. Now I know. I didn't either. And I've always thought like, all right, you should have known that. You flew in the cockpit of a. Uh, I did, but we didn't have to do cross check. I would have asked a million questions when I was sitting in there. Well, you probably would have been invited back. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> Do not bring this guy again. <laughs> no, but like, I've always wondered that. So I asked the other day. When hmm. I was flying somewhere. I was like, hey, I'm pretty sure I know what it means, but what does cross check mean? And they said, I'm like, that's what I thought. And they're like, you didn't think. <laughs> you know who you were in that moment when you're like, oh, that's what I thought. You were Rodney. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> no, I was not. I'm not doing that. We're not bringing this back up. You were. No, I did ask that. And I, I kind of felt dumb, but I was like, yeah, that's what I thought. But. It's funny, like they. Hey, you might just want to call ahead next time. You know, we give a lot of pro athletes you, that come in here. Come yeah, in here. Might, they ask about dress code. Yeah. a lot. They wear socks. They could probably help you out. Just keep some in your car. But you're on a plane, and it's like, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. If right. this is funny, great. But you're sitting there, and literally, unless you came in on a horse to the airport, right? Every car from 1967 is required to have a safety belt. We know exactly how to put a seatbelt on. We do. They go over well, that you know, in the, great the, detail. They're different seatbelts, though. I, mean, Not I get it. Really? <clears throat> I got it. What's your thought on a person that like says, <laughs> I know your thoughts on this, actually. <laughs> What's your thoughts on a, a extra large person that, you know, says these seats don't accommodate me? Uh, so you should give me two seats for the price of one. I'm not even gonna address <laughs> such a stupid question. That is going on. I think people are like like upset about that a little bit. Man, I have flown with my dog before. Yeah. And she fits under the seat in front of me. She weighs 55 pounds. Like, I didn't buy a seat for her. I shouldn't be given a seat for her. Why should? No, that's obscene. <laughs> and that actually, that's like beyond entitlement to me. A little bit. No, if you buy two seats. Sure. You put one cheek on one, one on the other. It's not going to be comfortable, though, because, you know, that armrest doesn't go all the way back. I know. It's just sticking right in the small of your right back. Right in your back. I mean, I bet if you're that large, though, that most of the stuff that you do is uncomfortable. Probably. I thought you were going to say, if you're that large, you wouldn't be able to feel it. You might not. You know, I had a pastor growing up when I went to church. And, um... <laughs> really getting vulnerable here today. He's a large fella. Okay. Um, a sweet, sweet man, of course. But he loved to ride motorcycles. Okay. And Did he look like one of the, those, remember that? picture from the guinness book of world record where the fattest twins and they're on those little motorcycles yes no he didn't look <laughs> like that no about? but this guy was big though yeah i do know exactly what you're talking about this guy was big but he loved to ride like on the weekends he'd go out and he'd get his like cruiser in his helmet you know with i sure he had leather and stuff you know it's just like his game yeah the, the headset but he got in a real big bad motorcycle accident where he was like thrown ejected rolled forever and like hit a bunch of stuff and the doctor said that only because he was so large really that did he survive no kidding. Yes. So sometimes it does pay. Sometimes it pays. In the right way. Sometimes. <laughs> a little rhyme there. Sometimes it does pay in the, in right, the right way. way. Sometimes, you know, there's plenty of times in life where you get paid back for something. You're like, oh, I'd ra- rather not be paid back for that. Uh, I want to tell you this is exciting. Today is uh, October the 9th. Right. The year of our Lord, 2023. So th- we've got a new thing that we're going to do with Highland Diamond. Oh. So I spoke to John. He knows people are like, Starting to shop for Christmas, really gearing up for that. He has, I'm going to read this for you. 
for the month of October, out in the hall listeners, you're going to call or go to the website. I'll give you the number in a minute. Tennis bracelets under $1,000 per carat. Get a five carat tennis bracelet in white or yellow gold for $4,900 or a 10 carat tennis bracelet for $9,000. Diamond studs in all sizes available. Call and mention out in the hall and get the deepest discount available. Lifetime trade up on diamond studs with full credit provided at the time of upgrade or to a larger pair. And he has Rolex Submariner watches, which are as hard. classic as they get. And hard to find. Very hard to find. He's got them for under 10 grand. Nice. So pretty sweet. Uh, that number, let me give it to you. 404 228 John at Highland Diamond or HighlandDiamond.com. What is a tennis bracelet? I think it's just like a, I don't know. Is it just like kind of like a like a loose yeah. bracelet maybe that has some uh, good looking stones on it? I think so. B- about it? I mean. You know what? Let's Google that. Let's Google that. I've clearly never bought one of those before. I buy them all the time. I just I don't know what they are. <laughs> Let's see. A uh, the current wife is into other stuff. Before they got their current name, tennis bracelets were all, often referred to as eternity bracelets. Oh. They were meant to symbolize eternal love, but have since become iconic jewelry must-haves. They represent feminine beauty without being too fancy or pretentious. Huh. Okay. That sounds nice to have. Yeah. Right. I don't get the tennis reference, but... Yeah, neither do I. Like a Chrissy Everett thing for a while. I, I guess it's also like th- there's a symmetrical line of diamonds. Okay. So maybe like all the way around, you know? Huh. I don't know what that means. In supposed to like five diamonds on the top. Right. It's like one, two, three, four, oh. five. That's what I'm I'm guessing. That's interesting. I'll tell you what, I know who could answer that question for us. John. John Highland Diamond. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll set me straight. Well, uh, Matt, man, I laughed a lot. Yeah, we did a lot of coughing. And that lasted 40 minutes or whatever, I'm okay 45 with that. minutes. I loved it. That's all I got today. I love you. Love you.